it's Sunday, and I am having a poor man's breakfast this morning, but I'm getting my education on orchids as well, and I'm sharing that with you all. Today is the A to Z culture lesson from Botanica's Orchid Guide, which I use the Bible. And this is from A to Z. Last week we did E, which was very good. This morning I'm having an oatmeal and coffee. No bacon. Oh well. So, last week was E. Today we're going to do F and G because they're so, such short categories as I found out. So let's just get started here and get on started with the day. Okay. We ended last week with Yuri Chung. This week we start with F. Flickingeria. Okay. These are the synonyms. Desmotrichum, Desmotrichum. Anyway, used to be a dendrobium. Um, widely distributed, creeping epiphytes with a rhizome from which uh, branching or erect pendulous stem arise. Stem stems have inner nodes and with the sheathing scale leaves. And the last is swollen to form a pseudobulb. And it talks about how there is a solitary leaf at the apex, and then the inflorescence is terminal to subterminal, which means that it can be at the top or um, along the cane. Flowers last less than a day, occasionally two flowers. Cultivation is at a dendrobium. Now, I have found these to be very, 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 very moisture loving. I grow mine bare root, and it has been very difficult to maintain. Especially during the winter time in the summer, it's a lot easier to to maintain them. They like shade, they like warmth, and they like moisture most of all. The one that I have is Flickingeria angustifolia. I've had a couple, and you know, once I figured out the water, it became a little bit easier. Um, the one that I have is bare mount. Bare, it's mounted. Let me just say that it is bare mounted as well. If there is such a thing because it is not mounted on top of anything. It doesn't have any additional media. And this is my Flickingeria in Gustafolia. You can see that it is just on a stick. And there is a new growth that looks like the leaf did not like it, but it is still alive. This likes deep shade. And again, you can see how it would form a pseudobulb at the top of a long, long cane. It forms a really fat pseudobulb with one solitary leaf. And then like with this one, it can form a spike from the base or from the top. That's Lickingeria. Now I've had a couple others, like I said, I know Sharon has a piece of my other big one that I got from Orchid Trail, and there are roots in there, you see that? So it is not so bad as what it would look. All right, let's move on. And now we're on G. And here's Galeandra. Now, Galeandra, I love Galeandra. They are so underappreciated. Right now, I, my Galeandras are just not up to par. Um, I don't know, well, they're small, and I tend to struggle with, uh, well, I'll just get on with this. Well, let me just complete my thought. I tend to struggle with, besides Kaisis, I tend to struggle with uh, Catacetum type uh, blooming or not blooming, but the ones that get the rest. And Galeandras do get that type of a rest, although not as strict as Catacetum. They still like moisture, humidity, but <clears throat> they are a deciduous um, epiphytic orchid. Um, you can see there's 25 species, 
Europe and South America. Um, cylindrical pseudobulbs with thin leaves grow from about sea level to your terrestrials or epilithophytes in higher elevations. Um, anywho, uh, I've had a few of these. I believe I have Bowery now. Probably my favorite is Galliandra uh, Leptotes, which I don't see here. But they're miniature plants. The plants bloom off of little wiry spikes that emerge from the top of either the newly formed pseudobulbs, generally, or they can be deciduously blooming, rarely. But the flower spikes, once they have a first flush of these little blooms that are very pleasant, sometimes there's a fragrance, then when cells are spent, then the spike can also elongate and put it, produce more buds, which give you more flowers. So it is sequentially blooming over a long period of time, as long as you give it the right conditions. Very pleasing plant, easy to grow, but they don't like as much humidity as what I give them. That's my issue in the greenhouse and just out here. And as evidenced by the way that my Galliandra looks right now, I might actually, <coughs> here is one that I have no idea why I'm even keeping onto it because I'm just hoping that, well, I mean, you see this, so it could possibly still, but you know, it's usually a slow rot from top, to, from bottom to top. Um, same as this one, which is my left Sarah's, which is the one that I was saying that I really like. Although this cane is still fine, you can see that it is very sad looking. This used to be a cane, and this also obviously used to be a cane. So these are definitely in state of disrepair, probably state of close to death. But I love them, and I will probably always try to collect them. I will. So, that's just that. And I think you should too. Um, Galliaris, I don't know anything about that. Gastrochylus. Now, Gastrochylus, I believe now is in another section. They've been, it's been renamed, but it's gonna always be Gastrochylus to me. And I had a Gastrochylus, one of these I had, might have been Calcularis. Um, I can't remember, it was so long ago. It was when I first got the greenhouse and I didn't have my humidity up to snuff. These are epiphytic, very small plants. They prefer to be mounted, but you can pot them as long as they're well-drained, but the high humidity and the frequent watering is, I think I had Belenus, that's what it was. This one, and it actually grew and it bloomed for me a couple times, but I don't know which one I had, but I think it was Belenus, but anywho, um, yeah, it was a fragrant flower late winter into spring, but similar to Herrera recticala, but, um, Gastrochylus Belenus, it was just susceptible. These were warm growers and my greenhouse got cold and it just died, but I had it mounted and it did well. Okay. Here's Gomezas, which I don't have. I think those are more cruel growers. Um, here's Gongora. Now, you know, Gongora is one of my favorite because I love Stan Hope. And Gongora is in that family of epiphytes. And you can see here, wide distribution from Mexico, Central America, habitat ranges from lowlands up to at least, you know, the Andes. Some are lithophytic, long inflorescence that are pendant and strongly for perfume flowers. And they might be grown in baskets or pots. Now, unlike Stanhopias, which the pseudobo, I mean the inflorescence, emerges straight down, which requires a slatted basket or or pot, something like that. These, although they're pendant, they still sort of swim over the surface of the pot or the media until it reaches the edge, and then it goes down. So. Very rarely does it go straight down through the media. It mostly emerges erect up to the top until it finds the rim of the pot and then it goes pendant. 
Um, I've had a few of these gongoras. Like I said, they are they are warm growers. There are some that are more on the intermediate side, which are the ones that I've usually tried to grow. Um, none of these I have presently, I don't think, that are in this book. Yeah, I do have a histrionica, but it's going on its way out. And let me just go in and, oh, I stepped on some styrofoam. But anyway, my histrionica looks really sad. It's, it's probably right here dead. No, oh, that's Quinquinervus. Let me just throw that aside. Here's my histrionica right here. Actually, it looks a lot better than what I said. Um, but it's because I've been keeping it pretty much sitting in this little tray of water um, off and on several times during the week I will set it and exchange these out and you can see the pseudobulbs are deeply ridged I have this um, repotted in it's mostly sphagnum but it's layered in there with charcoal and bark for drainage and you see there's a couple new growths coming so this probably is not yet quite bloom size. And this is Gongora chocoensis, which is not in that book. And it has lost its leaves. When it loses its leaves, that is pretty much a sign that it's not getting enough water. Same with Stanhopias. Sometimes it can, that can occur because of the, the light, too much light but it's usually because of the water. And this is a, uh, this is not a gongora. So, that's, that was my gongora histrionica. And just so that I can give you an example, I do have a gongora that is in bloom, or not in bloom, but is in spike. And it's right here, my gongora grossa. And you can see what I was saying, how the spike emerged and then it crawled across and now it's over the edge of the, the pot and so it will as the flowers get bigger and hard, uh, heavier or as the spike gets longer it will tilt down and then it will become very pendant so that's how that inflorescence looks and let's keep moving on all right so that was Gongor, and you can see how it could be an obsession because they are very fragrant. Some of them have cinnamon, some of them have musk. It's all depending on the species. Now, Gajira, which is a terrestrial, I never have had Gajira. Grammatophyllum, a Grammatophyllum, I do have a Grammatophyllum, bucketless plant, Staphylophyllum, right here. But Grammatophyllum, they are large epiphytes from Southeast Asia, New Guinea, and the Pacific Islands. Hot, humid coastal conditions related to cymbidium. Large, long spikes of showy flowers, thick roots that grow upwards, catching litter leaf. Filtered bright light. Require plenty of room in the orchid house. So the one that I have is Staphylophorum, which seems to me to be more of a manageable one because grammatophyllums, they require room, as this says. But this one is more manageable. This is a species that occurs on the Malay Peninsula, Borneo, Sumatra, etc., in the Philippines. Epiphytically at low elevations in rainforests. Six inch, two to, two to three leathery leaves, up to a foot long, pendulous inflorescence. And I have bloomed this a couple times. Here is my grammatophyllum step and form, and you can see how uh, the pseudobulbs are now where the new growths right in front of us are maturing. This one has almost completed its growth. And then here's this one. And you can see these are the previous growths. And here is a previous spike, pendant spike with a seed pod. Um, but again, it is manageable. I have it hanging. Um, they like filtered to bright light and they're from a rainforest, but a lot less while the, when the pseudobulbs have reached maturity. So that's why I have moved them from out in the jungle to under here, under this awning, because they don't want any more water, because they are very susceptible at this time. So we'll move on. 
Um, Proforcus, I don't know anything about Proforcus, Christidium. I don't have any Christidium, but I know the Christidiums can sometimes be. Christidium actually is related to the plant that is Sororium. It used to be a Sororium, which is, uh, you know, the one that is in the greenhouse, not in the greenhouse, but it's out there. And you can see this plant really closely resembles that. You can see the leaves, how they're in that upward way, that upward erect way. You can even see the yellow in between those leaves. And just for good measure, because this technically is a dendrobium, it is in that Fristidium section. And you can see it right here, how I was talking about how that erect form of the the leaf, the way that it grows. And also, I mean, there are, you can't, there are no flowers, the flower fell off, but you can see how the flowers emerge from that same area. And that is my sororium. And this is in that section, Gristidium, used to be Gristidium. And so this is just an example of that section, although technically <clears throat> I don't have any of these, but this closely resembles that one. Grobia, I do not have that. Habanarias, I wish I could grow them, but I can't. I have tried. I actually had a maxillar, uh, max, no, medusae. Habanaria medusae, and I don't, <clears throat> I don't see it in here, but it's the one that is really spidery. Kind of, well, it actually has been renamed, so, doo -doo 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 -doo, I don't know. But it looks closely like this, um, but it's a little bit more wiry and long. Um, but anywho, I had one of those, and these are, these should be easy, because they don't, they get a strict rest when they lose all of their foliage. Um, and then you really don't water them until you see new growths or not new growths, but the leaves, the foliage arise from the top, similar to most terrestrials that are in the ground or what have you. Um, and that's pretty much the habit of this. Lots of forms and colors, and I wish I could grow them because they're easy. They should be, but I just, I don't know why. I can't. Him, him, him at a gloss, and no thanks. And Hoko Glossum. Now, I have tried Hoko Glossum. Um, I think they're just Vanda type. And some of them are cooler growers. The ones that I tried to grow is Kimbalianum. And you can see it's a, a very cool grower. So I had no reason to even try to grow it because it is from the higher elevations. Even Amisianum, elevations of 4,000 feet. So it says they are at mostly moderate to high elevation, so that means that they are a cooler grower. So I had no reason. And let's just move on. I'm at a Pedalum, Huntleya. Andy's had some beautiful Huntleyas. It is a, I would love to have that plant. But there again, look. Wet cloud forest, 17, you can't, I can't. I can't grow it. Okay, so that is G and H. I will stop there and complete my not my breakfast, folks. Before I get too long-winded, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope that you're gaining something from this because I sure am. Because it's every time that I read this, it further cemented in my brain on where these plants come from, what conditions they need, how to grow them, and how to keep them happy. So I'm hoping that you're getting a piece of that knowledge too. And again, thanks for watching, and enjoy your orchids. Bye.